Last week, police announced the arrest of three new suspects in a Boston bombing. The suspects are accused of conspiracy to obstruct justice and of hiding evidence. The irony is so thick you can cut it with a knife. All right, let's just review here. We have photos from multiple angles showing a group of men with identical pants, boots, and communication devices standing right where the bombs were located right before the explosions. Then these same men were standing across the street watching the scene as it unfolded, and their attention was focused on the location of the bombs. One of these men was photographed on the scene with an unidentified device, and yet another is photographed placing a backpack in a doorway. We also have photographs of someone on the roof watching the scene from above, and then we see these same people communicating with government officials after the blast. None of the people we're showing here are the Sarnoff brothers. None of these people have been arrested, none of these people have been brought in for questioning, and the mainstream media is not talking about it. So who exactly is obstructing justice? Who is hiding evidence? Until these men shown in these pictures are arrested, and until the official story accounts for their participation in the event, we have to consider every person that's being charged in this case to be victims of a cover-up. If the government and the mainstream media are willing to continue selling this preposterous story, a story that leaves out the overwhelming photographic evidence implicating these other players, and which fails to explain how the Sarnoff brothers who were photographed peacefully surrendering to the authorities ended up brutalized, one to the point of death, the other one left hospitalized with injuries to the neck which conveniently left him incapable of speaking, then we have to assume that they are intentionally hiding the truth from the public and that they are willing to sacrifice any number of innocent people in pursuit of their agenda, shamelessly trampling the rights of entire communities in the process. And to top it all off, now they're trying to claim that this event was caused by internet radicalization. Of course, we all know where this line of propaganda is headed. The U.S. government and the mainstream media don't just lack credibility here. Their actions demonstrate criminal involvement. Even a third grader could look at this evidence and tell you that the official story is a lie. Now, fortunately, this event seems to have backfired. Unlike September 11th, which frightened the masses into giving away their freedoms for the promise of security, the response to the Boston bombings and the clampdown that followed has had the exact opposite effect. Public opinion polls taken right after the event show that more Americans are now afraid of the government than they are of terrorists. Furthermore, a poll conducted by Farley Dickinson University this April showed that 29% of Americans now believe that, quote, an armed revolution may be necessary in order to protect our liberties. And 20% stated that they weren't sure, which means that they're sitting on the fence on this issue. These numbers are in stark contrast to the way the mainstream sources are trying to paint anti-government sentiment as a fringe extremist phenomenon. We're not just a force to contend with, we're positioned to become the majority. In 2011, scientists at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute conducted a study on the spread of beliefs and cultures, and they found that when just 10% of the population holds an unshakable belief, that position is guaranteed to be adopted by the majority of the population. Those of us who've woken up to the true level of corruption in the U.S. government, those of us who contend that this system has become an instrument of tyranny and oppression, are most definitely unshakable in our belief. We've passed the tipping point, folks, and that's why the powers that be are getting desperate and sloppy. But that also makes them very dangerous. Because their recent moves have not been getting traction, they're going to have to take this to a whole new level in order to stay in power. Sometime in this next year, we can almost certainly count on another event like this, one that may make 9-11 pale in comparison. These people are not going to let go of power voluntarily. They will pull out every trick in the book to keep their position. However, if we refuse to react as programmed and to be herded towards a desired solution, then such a move could turn out to be the breaking point which takes the regime down. However, we shouldn't just passively hope that enough people wake up in time. We have to redouble our efforts to reach the public in these coming months. This isn't just a question of trying harder. We've got to get creative. We've got to think outside the box. We've got to bring this information to people who aren't looking for it. One really interesting action that's being organized for this Saturday, May 11th, is an event that some of us have affectionately labeled Troll for Truth. The idea is simple. Hit Barack Obama's Facebook page and Twitter with tons of comments and links all that day. Swamp them with videos, articles, and images exposing his corruption. And keep them coming until they ban you. What's great about this is that you get to let out your inner troll. And you'll be trolling for a good cause. So mark it on your calendar. May 11th, Troll for Truth. Let Obama and his minions know what you think of them. If you'd like more content like this, please subscribe to this channel, Storm Clouds Gathering, on YouTube. For updates and bonus content, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Storm Clouds Gathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and our website, stormcloudsgathering.com.